are super competitors. If anything, ran maybe in the lead up to a competition, everybody's just nervous. We all get nervous. Maybe she just wants to deal with that a little bit better, and she will. Smart kid. Uh, it'll make life easier. And I missed the beginning of what you're talking about. I'm sure you talked about a lot. This world record versus what he did in uh, Eugene before the Olympics, I mean, obviously a bigger setting. I'd say and this is a better, I don't know about, this is, a, this is a tremendous world record from this standpoint. The length of the days, the length of time in the days, and the minimal amount of sleep. And you get minimal warm-ups, you get two warm-up throws. Two warm-up throws in the shot, discus and jump. Okay. That's it. How many did they get when he was in Eugene? Oh, you can warm up for 25 minutes. Take a whole bunch, you know. This is a tough deal. Not, no American since 76, Jenner in 76, broke a world record at one of these big Dan didn't break him. Okay. Brian didn't break him. That's a gutsy performance right there. That's a tough performance. And I didn't see the very end of Eugene. Was he, was he more spent and emotional tonight? No, it seemed like he no. was. He, was he, he crossed the line, ran 414 something, and uh, he wasn't spent like this. Like this. Yeah. He said to me before, he was going to go for it. He knew it. But he said, Coach, I'm running these repeat hundreds, and the fatigue's coming on a lot sooner than it normally does. Which said, my body's tired. Yeah. But I, I'm convinced when you talk to him, you ask him. As soon as those people started doing the wave, the, the crowd, Ashton is a guy that always gives back. He does the sport more for other people than he does for himself. Well, you, you, Me and his mom. You know why I love him going over, shake the hands of every, every guy in the field. Uh, yeah. See, they didn't come to him, he went to them. To be a great decathlete, you have to be a good, you have to have an athletic skill. But you need so much more than that. You need, you need to be able to deal with chaos. You need, because there's no one decathlete. You can't put down a decathlon, I'm going to run this for the 100, this for the long jump. It's not going to happen. It just won't work out. And if you believe that, that's what, the only way to get it, you'll never get to the top. He can deal with chaos better than anybody that I've ever seen. Harry, well, U.S. team, though, I'm sorry, U.S. last thing for me, U.S. team, not as good a result in terms of overall medals as last time around. You know, I haven't How followed it closely. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. So and I probably end up with around 19, looks like. 19 what did we get last time? 25? 20, 20, 25 in Moscow. Yeah, no. I thought it was even worse. It seems like it's like well, they're gonna get two the hurdles. Medals. I thought we get at least four medals between the men and women. We'll get two medals one. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, they had, they had six golds and 25 overall medals, which was down for us in, over, in goals. Someone said, maybe on the bus ride over today, a lot of the kids in the team are young. I don't know. Um, and, and all the other countries have young athletes, too. But that's, that's not it. The world's, is the world catching up? Yeah. You know, I mean, it seems like as time goes on, the U.S. shouldn't be as dominant, right? If, yeah, makes If all of Africa is pretty well developed and Germany and... Hey, who's the javelin throw? What's his name? Lego? Yeah, they got from, from Kenya. Yeah. yeah, now Kenya can get a javelin throw in addition to their distance runners. We better start picking up our, cleaning up our act, right? That's a good steep so where, from the U.S., right? Where did Ashton give up points? I, mean, I see that 400, I heard his javelin was well. He did, he did one shot put competition this year. He did one javelin competition this year. One high jump competition this year. So those events, for sure, were rusty. He just wasn't timed up. His technique was good in the shot foot, but you know, if you're gonna throw a punch, you get on your front foot, and you really go through with it, you know, or whatever. And he was getting there and doing it. Timing, timing. Next year I was saying that we do all of our work pre-Olympic year when we get all our work done. Next year we'll be getting shape and compete. So we'll be sure. The 4,500. I, I knew it'd be fast. Did I know it was going to be 45? No, I don't think anybody did. I mean, he's been open. Like that to me was the most amazing performance. I mean, I'm not a Catholic coach, but I'm more amazed with the 45, 400 than the world record. Like it doesn't surprise me he broke the world record, but I'm shocked you're in he the He needed 45. the 45 to break yeah. the world record because yeah, the high end. jump wasn't as good. And if he would have run, what? What would he have run in the 400 not to get the record? Then you know the points that well. Yeah, it's about 50 points a second in 400. So let's say he ran 45.5. How much did he break the record by? Six points? Yeah, about that. Yeah. He's toast. <laughs> He'd be toast. What would you tell him for the 1500 in terms of pacing? We, we said he was tired. I knew he was tired during the pole. So in, in, uh, in uh, Eugene, 
he ran 69s. He had to run 416, right? He ran 69s. I said, then bring it. And he was fresh. There were not as many hours in the day of me. So we went to 70s here. Run 70, 70, 70. Bring it in 330. Run a 58 or 57. Last 300. Should be about two hours. Will, uh, will Eugene do anything for him? Parade or something like that? I don't know. So we ran 70, we're going to go 70, but it got all thrown out because he, this is how smart he is. He got to the first lap in 71, but the second lap's always going to be a little bit slower unless you're really big up. He took off. It scared me because I said, I know he's gutsy and he's going to give it, but is he going to cramp up? Is he going to fatigue soon? But, and I think you saw him, Elliot, good to see him. Thanks. I think you saw him uh, cramp up the last, or fatigue, the last 50, 60 meters. But he got it done. But he was behind though. It no, right, wasn't he, he, run. Wasn't he behind? Stay in touch, it? right? It's McCarty. Yeah, Chris, thanks a lot. Great come, job. Come wasn't he behind it? I thought he was behind it. He was. He Wilbur. was. He needed a 64-second last lap. I, I know that. But at some point, they announced he was behind, right? So were you confident that he get a 64? Yeah, if he needed. A, he needed six. He came through. And I don't feel like he ran a 30 last 200. Maybe I'm off on that. He might have. I don't. You know what? I was with all the crowd. I couldn't see what the hell was going on. What? Where are you from? What's, I'm with Let's Run. Com. I'm from Texas. Oh, that's right. I knew it. Yeah. I'm at, yeah. You're at a at a thing before the pre-meet. The press conference. Or no, before. You guys were me on the Flintstone vitamins thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's his limit? What's his limit? You know what? Here's what his limit is, and here's what every athlete's limit is. You shouldn't put a limit. A coach or whoever never should put a limit. Bill Toomey told me that years ago uh, and said, don't tell a kid he can jump 25 feet because that's probably all he'll do. So if Ashton Eaton, he could jump way higher in the pole. Not, you know, he jumped uh, 540 a couple weeks ago, 79. He could jump higher. He could jump farther than 27 feet. He can run faster than 1020. He can throw the shot farther than 50 feet, 6 or whatever he throws. He can do all that. So I don't know what it's about. I have no idea. But I never would put a limit on it. And as long as a kid wants to keep pursuing it and thinks he can improve, I'll coach him. So what, what is he, because let's run mostly distance, what does he do for endurance training? Everything is built. You know, that's a good question. And maybe you can take a slant on this. Grand Tyson Eden. Let off the Canadian 4x4 in uh, the Pan Ams. 50.9. Really? Legit. Wow. Ashton Eaton runs 45 flat. You think you're pretty good quarter milers? Yeah. Our whole program is built around 400 meter training. The decathlon, the heptathlon is a first as a running event. Get in great shape and then you build off that. Sharpen it down to 200 meters for free or up to four. So in the 1500, you know what we do? We have one workout we call non-stop hunters, where we, we treat the 1500 as a technique. It's not just out there running hard. It's technique, the shuffling underneath, it's soft on your legs, short little arm cadence. So and, does go, who does he go with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who does he, who's he emulate there? Uh, Bruce Schindler. Huh. I learned that from Bruce back in 1976 when he ran 411. And uh, if you watch those th short little strides compared to his 400 strides, I watched Andrew Weeding, Matt Centrowitz, uh, when I was the college coach at uh, Oregon that first year with Vin. I'd go watch his workouts at night. And I, you know, when Weeding was running well, how efficient he was, and Central was a great, I said, guys, you have to do that, you know, to Ash and Breen. So we tried it one day in practice. It's a good story for you. And they didn't buy into it. Congratulations. Hey, tomorrow. Michael. You have a, a great athlete, athlete, and you are a great coach. Yeah, but you are a great, you are a great competitor. Yeah, and Thank you me. helped him to the 45 because he couldn't catch him, and he saw you. He said, "I got to catch Michael." I did it for him. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell my kids in a few years I did it for him. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Bye bye. So, uh, um, what was I? Something about a good story with him. Oh. Um, Tell me about the 1500 training, 400. Uh, oh yeah, so we did in practice when they, neither of them liked it that much. We go to Estonia, Ashton's first year out of college, and he's doing the heptathlon. He has to run 234 to break the world record. That he broke in college the year before. 
And I said, look at Ash, these guys aren't going to run. You're going to have to run this thing by yourself. So you might as well buy into what I was telling you. Get out and then just settle underneath yourself and just shuffle along. I go to the 200, the backside of the stretch, you give him the splits. He comes around, it's five laps, right, turn him your track. Comes around the third lap and I give him the splits. He goes, I could go forever. You know, he was just in that. Really? He just, and as soon as he, and he ran 232 or something like for that. For 1,000? For 1,000. 232 and some change. This is PR. Wow. Yeah, 232, 60. That to me seems way better than this, but I guess they get then tired. Before, yeah, 1500. It's a long way for them. It's 50% yeah. farther. To me, I'm like, oh, he, yeah, if he shows them, he won, if, he, if there wasn't a decathlon he did for 100, and he trained for 1500, he could run, who knows what he could run. He ran, and before that, uh, 232, uh, who was Andrew's training partner? The dark haired kid from Hanover that ran for Vin at Stanford. He does, he's got Achilles tendon problems, he's not running anymore. He was a 355 miler or better. Oh, Russell. Russell Brown. Oh, Russell Brown, yeah, Russell yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown. So Russell Brown and Vin are doing a workout one day, and they're going to run uh, 600s at 28. I said, can Ashley jump it? Because it was about a month before a, a big meet. And he said, yeah. So Russell runs 28, 28, 28. That's 124. Yeah. 28, 56, yeah. 124. And then he drops off. Ashton brings it in 28, runs 152, 5 or 6, and an 800 on a cold gray day in practice. 152. And 152 and some right. change. And Weeding starts punching in. Ashton, he just ran 152. And it's all over. And he didn't run 152. Wow. Yeah. So we, we the answer, 400 meter training, and then we build up and run some tempo stuff. Ash ran 66, 66, 61 in a, a, a time 1200 meters in Santa Barbara at the end of a pre, what's that? So what, it can't know. be a coincidence that two kids from the same school are like two of the best, one's the best, of, like what do you, I'm giving you credit for a, a huge part of this, I'm sure you're probably trying to deflect it to the athletes, but there's billions of people on the planet and two happen to be, you know, your people are two of the best. What do you think you do differently than other people are? You know, I think, as a coach, I always, not just with Ashton Bray, all the guys I've ever coached and the kids I've ever coached, you, you have to listen to athletes. You don't, maybe you don't listen quite as much to a high school kid because he's just learning and you got to bring him along. But uh, uh, I, I try to listen to an athlete. Then I try to adapt a philosophy or an idea that I have to fit what they are talking to me about. Uh, that's why we do the shuffle and the shot put, for example. It's a little different. It works for both of them, and they throw very well. So um, I think I've been in the decathlon since track and field. This is my 50 50 year of sport. I started in 1968. You look good. Everything looks good, nothing works. <laughs> what? <laughs> So who, uh, does so, Nike pay you? Ashton pays you? How does no, that work? No, no. I have no contract with the athletes. I never did, never will. I just don't believe in that. I think it muddies the coach-athlete relationship, the trust and, and, and the relationship that we have, Ashton, Bree, and I. I would not compromise for anything. I think money would be so How do you get paid? I get paid by the Oregon Track Limited. I work for the Oregon Track Limited. Really? Yeah. So they're both OTC members? They're both OTC members, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been employed by them since I left the university. That point. Is there a bonus? I hope you get a bonus or something. Hey, call Vin when you tell him to oh, give Oh, I'll make sure. All right, congratulations. Thank Good you. seeing you. Thanks, you.